position of being at odds with, you know, as capable a lawyer as Mr. Bernstein and, as, and one who has, has demonstrated himself to be as solicitous to his clients as, as any of our lawyers that I've seen. Um, and in terms of, uh, you know, being patient, you know, beyond patient in terms of explaining the circumstances, I'm not sure how we can be in this position. Uh, and that's why I fear that we're going to be, you know, doing this on a serial basis uh, here with you coming in um, and attorney saying, you know, well, you know, gosh, yeah, we had a disagreement, so you immediately reported me to the bar. I guarantee you it'll never happen because I never did call the bar. Well, then, well, then what was the fax that you, you sent to Mr. Uh, Bernstein indicating that you had contacted the... Did you send this fax to me? Yes. Does, this say, does this say you've been instructed by the Oregon State Bar? Does that say that? Yes, yes, actually. Okay. Well, okay. I, but well, now, I, it was nearly a buzz. I didn't report it. I was told to call Salem to report it. I chose not to. I wanted to talk to him. And he wouldn't. He wasn't willing to listen to anything that I had to say about any of the events. Yeah, I, okay. So, so I, felt, I felt, well, I guess, I mean, to find somebody that is willing to hear. Well, I, you know, the problem is, is the problem is, Mr. You know, Mr. Davis, is that um, actually, um, you know, Mr. Bernstein, and I'm, I'm certain um, as to the... Uh, uh, veracity of this, you know, lets you, you know, go on on the phone at some length about all of this. So, you know, so I don't know when you say he won't listen. Now, now, if, if what you mean when you say he won't listen is that he won't agree with me about the um, about uh, the legal implications of my case, well, we're not going to necessarily be able to find a lawyer that's going to agree with your legal assessment of the case, um, and probably we're not going to be able to find one. Um, and so you have to understand that if that's what you're talking about uh, in terms of not listening um, and you're equating that with not agreeing, well, I think we're going to find that, that probably most lawyers are not going to listen Honor, as, you as you describe can, that. Can I point out my main concern of why I was contacting the bar to find out what I do as a lawyer? Yeah. Because when I Yeah. I'm sorry. 
that the victims to the case are, uh, are identified as somebody you believe to be perpetrators. I'm sorry that the witnesses don't support your claim, but there's nothing that getting a new lawyer for you is going to do about that. There's nothing. Nothing that, the, that a new lawyer is going to be able to do about that. So, you know, so I don't know what you expected Mr. Bernstein to do. I don't know what your view of this is, but if, you're, if your view is just everyone else in the case is lying, that is a, just a very difficult defense to make. I did not say everyone else in the case is lying. Can I put a couple of things on the record? I realize, Your Honor, I just want the record to reflect. I met in my office with Mr. Davis, also met with the alleged victim, his domestic partner. He explained to me the same items that he was explaining to the court today. I tried to explain to him that I thought that some of that was peripheral material. However, I undertook to obtain the information to see whether it was peripheral or whether it did have some bearing based on the underlying potential medical foundation that I was advised about. My client was also supposed to and agreed to get various information for me, including material from his doctors, which I had asked for. I made a request for what appeared to be peripheral information from Mr. Wentworth. He sent me a letter requesting some clarification and some additional information. I forwarded the letter to Mr. Davis saying, I got this. Can you respond? Do you have any additional information? He called and said, you know the address. I faxed that information to you once before. I indicated I did, but there were other information that was requested of Mr. Wentworth. I called Mr. Wentworth back. I told him, this is the information I have. That was it. We had another phone call where Mr. Davis was extremely upset. That was the one where I allowed him to talk without interrupting him. He refused to allow me to talk, and that's when I hung up on him and uh, filed this motion, Your Honor. Well, anyway, yeah, Mr. Davis, I, I just, I don't know what, you know, I, I don't know what the problem is. I don't know why you behaved uh, in this way. Um, I have no idea. But the problem is that if, you, if, if this is going to be the approach you take, that, you know, that I'm not going to respond to this letter, which, of course, the attorney has an obligation to send you the letter that Mr. Wentworth sent him, requesting whatever it was, additional information he wanted. If, you, if your response is going to be, hey, pal, I faxed you that information. Mr. Davis. Mr. Davis, Mr. Davis, what, 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 I don't, can you just stop talking for about half a second and quit this business about turning around and talking to your friend in the back? Yeah, I don't know why, you know, I don't know what you're thinking here, but you are, you know, you are in a bit of a spot here that we're trying to get you somebody to help you, and of course you're doing everything you can, seemingly, to undermine that. And, and I don't have, a, for an instant, a doubt that you did exactly what Mr. Bernstein said. Now, whether you remember it or not because of some, you know, issue in terms of your mental health condition that you've been telling us about, I don't know. But what I do know is that we're not going to do this over and over again, period. Now, so you need to understand, you need to understand that it is your job now, just take this as, okay, I'm in a whole new kind of an alien situation here. I'm charged with a crime, and I'm, I'm facing consequences resulting from the potential loss of liberty here uh, because of potential in, uh, being in jail, all of these things. So, so what can I, Mr. Davis, do? Okay, here is your job. Your job is to get along with your lawyer. That is your job. Get along with your lawyer. Now, do you, do you understand that? Do you understand how important that is to you? Okay, well, then, then that's what you're going to have to do. We're going to get you a new lawyer, and you need to get along with the new lawyer. And you can't be challenging them that you sent information to them, and so they shouldn't bother you, uh, or anything like that. Or if they tell you that, you know, I'm sorry, but this is not going to be helpful to your case by going into some peripheral issue, well, then, okay, you tell them, well, that may be, but I really want you to pursue this and try to present it, even though the judge may ultimately determine that it is entirely irre irrelevant to the case and won't allow you to present the evidence I want you to try. But you need to do that respectfully. You need to do that 
with the same level of respect that you would expect in return and not be making demands. Demands about things that you don't know about. Now, if, if we thought, if we thought people that charged with crimes were in a position to make their own best decisions, to make their own assessments of the legal implications of their situation, we wouldn't bother, we wouldn't bother spending Mr. Bernstein's and others' time. We wouldn't, we wouldn't expect them to, at a significantly reduced fee, uh, for them personally to provide this